I will call the regular city council meeting of July 11th, 2024 to order at 7 p.m. Where's my thing? Please rise and join in reciting the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we will call the uh, roll call. Mrs. Conley. Here. Mr. Gross. Here. Mr. Marvel. Here. Mr. Maxson. Here. Oh, here. I would like to introduce um, to the public um, Mr. Michael Maxson. He is our new board member that's taken over um, Ashley's, no, not Ashley's. Um, Angela. Angela, thank you. Angela's position. Um, she had to move out of the area. So, um, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, now it's time for public comments. The council welcomes and encourages the public to speak during the public comment and public hearing portions of the agenda. However, council policy is to hear the public comment, not to act on the public comment at this time. Concerns brought before the council during the public comment portion of the agenda will be referred to the city manager for action. If after communicating with the city manager, no resolution is reached, the concern will be, will be elevated to the mayor and then eventually to the council for action. Those citizens wishing to speak on agenda and non agenda items will be allowed a maximum of four minutes each to address their concerns. This is the only time during the council meeting that citizens are allowed to address the council. Please state your name and address for, for the record if you would like. Are there any members of the public that would like to make a public comment? Great. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? I know you guys said you'd like to see me, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, my name is Jacob Puckett. Uh, my address is 174 Pine. And I have questions and concerns. So I know I'd voiced to a couple of you last week about uh, traffic issues in the city. So not only is my street borderline reckless driving. Um, I mean, five over is one thing. Doing almost 55 to 45 and a 25 is very consistent, especially because my kids play in my front, in front of my house. I know probably about a month ago, somebody had drove in, into somebody's house on 17 mile. And that's what I'm worried about. My kids getting hit or somebody else's kids getting hit. So I had been thinking on ways that we could mitigate speed, not only on my street, but also in the streets of Cedar Springs, because eventually somebody's going to get hit. Um, and was wondering if it would be possible if we put a stop sign on Pine right at the corner of the fifth yeah. right there um because obviously sheriffs can't be there always you know what i mean it's just an impossible task sometimes um and i understand that so trying to figure out different ways to to mitigate that um i know also i talked to another uh council member and on her street as well she was concerned as well so i don't know maybe we could hopefully try to figure a way to again mitigate that um but uh yeah that's it for me today so <laughs> thanks guys thank you thank you anyone else anybody online okay thanks. hearing no additional public comment we will move on to the adoption of the, of the agenda are there any additions or corrections needing needed on the agenda? Yes, please. We could add six E uh, library amendments. Okay. Can I get a motion? Anything else you want to add? I'll make a motion to approve that. 
addition 6E. Any second? I'll have it. All right. Um, we don't need a roll call one for that, do we? Yeah, we do. Motion and support. Oh, yeah. Do we need one? to add it if we haven't adopted the agenda yet? Hmm. Adopting an agenda with the addition. We haven't adopted the agenda yet. Yeah, right. Do we need a motion? We're not sure whether or not this is how we're going to work to adopt the agenda as a motion. Yes. Is that correct? Any other discussion? Mr. Gross? Yes. Mr. Maxson? Yes. Mr. Marvel? Yes. Mr. Pop? Yes. Yes. Mrs. Brady? Yes. And Ms. Atchison votes yes. Okay. Um, then we just add, we added that to the consent agenda. That's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Are there any, uh, we don't have any other things that we want to talk about on the consent agenda, do we? Okay. Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. I will second that. All right. Mrs. Powell. Mrs. Conley? Yes. Mrs. Race? Yes. Mr. Maxim? Yes. Mr. Marvel? Yes. Mr. Gross? Yes. And then Okay, okay now we move on to action item 7A, motion to approve resolution 2024-18, a resolution to proclaim July 24th, 2024 as Rose Powell Day. I would like to make Yeehaw. that motion. <laughs> I'll second that. All right. Um, do we have a discussion? Um, um, do you want to read the person. resolution or? Yeah. Uh, it is 2024-18 and it's a resolution to proclaim July 24, 2024 as Rose Powell Day. Whereas Rose Powell has demonstrated an exceptional commitment to public service and community development through her extensive involvement in various local organizations and initiatives. And whereas she has served as a city council member where her leadership and dedication have significantly contributed to the betterment of our community. And whereas she has been an integral member of the planning commission helping to shape and guide the growth and development of our city with her insightful and thoughtful contributions. And as whereas she has actively participated in the Downtown Development Authority, playing a key role in the revitalization and enhancement of our downtown area, ensuring its prosperity for future generations. And whereas she has been a devoted member of the Women's Club, where she has worked tirelessly to empower women and promote their active involvement in civic and community life. And whereas she has been a dedicated member of the Garden Club, sharing her love for nature and beautifying our community through no numerous garden gardening projects and initiatives. And whereas she has significantly contributed to the success of the Red Flannel Festival, a cherished community tradition through enthusiastic support and active participation. And whereas Rose Powell has made countless other contributions to our community, always exemplifying the spirit of service, dedication, and selfishness. Now, selflessness, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, now, therefore, be it resolved, that the city of Cedar Springs hereby recognizes and honors Rose Powell for her lifetime of service and extra, extraordinary contributions to our community. And be it further resolved that July 24, 2024 is hereby declared as Rose Powell Day in recognition of her outstanding achievements and unwavering dedication to the betterment of our com community. Be it further resolved that on this day, we encourage all citizens to join 
and celebrating, ex expressing their gratitude to Rose Powell for her remarkable service and lasting impact on our community. Well, we practicing for the 24th you know yeah I just, <laughs> one of the reasons i do all these things is because i'm retired <laughs> that's helpful you have time and um the people of cedar springs i enjoy this in community and what a pleasure it's been to um get to know so many people and so many different um activities i lost my darn speech uh, I got it out. Anyways, uh, I, I had a few things I wanted to. It could be back in your purse. Um, I might have. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank Ron Mer Ron Merlington, <laughs> um, a fabulous government teacher. Uh, a man who led this community in so many ways. And um, the the first people that I was on this board with, uh, Dan Clark, Bob Truesdell, Molly Towns, Newsing, or Nixon, Pam, of course, Connolly, Gerald Hall, our beloved Gerald Hall, Jerry Gross, Lisa, Renee, Ashley, I miss her a lot, and of course, Mr. Marvel. And our staff, Rebecca, Darla, Emily, Bill and Tanya, Sergeant Probst, and Sergeant Kelly. He was our first Kent County Sheriff. Mm -hmm. And what a wonderful decision it was to move to Kent County for our police department. Marty Frazier, what a man to, to uh, have donated as many years as he did to our fire department. And Donna Clark, Mike Womack, who, who um, back into the DDA and has helped us create a lot of the things in the Cedar Springs. The other thing is the Kent Theater Association. What a miracle that that happened. It was went from a trashed out old dumpy old building and now to a theater. And especially Len Allington, it was his dream. The museum, we have a fabulous museum and all the folks that run that. Volunteers, every one of these folks are so big hearted toward our community and we just they just amaze me uh, the garden club wonderful bunch of people that is just another group of people that astonish me and they don't live here in cedar springs but their heart is here in cedar springs a couple of us do. yeah a couple of us <laughs> you and i um the community building development team <clears throat> when before i got on uh council the north end of our city was just basically kind of a trash dump. And I never in my wildest dreams that we would have gotten what we have today, the amphitheater, the library, the trails. It, it, it's just a dream come true. And I often sit there and I think, well, it's like being in the Wizard of Oz, you're like in a whole different land in just 10 years. Um, especially Dwayne McIntyre, who's worked his guts out for that. And Kurt, of course, we know. And and Dwayne is still doing it. So mm -hmm. thank you to him. Red Flannel Festival, dear to our hearts. And again, these are people that may not live in Cedar Springs, but their whole life has been somehow in connection of our city and our festival, Red Flannel Festival. The only one in the world, by the way. And, we, and I will protect and defend it to my death. 
And I guess that's about all, except for thank you, everybody. This is a great honor. And also, I hope we do this to more of our fine citizens because we have a great community here and a lot of wonderful citizens. And one more thing, uh, September 26th is also Chris Powell Day. So who knew he was a uh, got a Chris Powell Day from John Tusink when he retired from the fire department. So, you know, let's keep this up and show others how much we appreciate their work and and commitment to the city because this is a fantastic place to live. Thank you. I just wanted to... <clears throat> so what we have lined up so far, so far on July 24th, um, 10 a.m. we'll gather at the museum um, they're going to provide coffee and cookies. So if you know Rose through the museum, show up at the museum and, and thank her and all that good stuff. Um, noon, we'll have lunch at the Redbird Bistro. Uh, two o'clock in the afternoon, we'll stop by the brewery. Uh, five o'clock, uh, we'll be next door at the American Legion Car Show. And then seven o'clock in the evening uh, at the concert at the amphitheater. Okay, do I get a nap anywhere in there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. That's going to be a great fun day. What time did you say at the museum? 10 a.m. And members of the public, anybody, um, come join us. Even if even if you um, haven't really met Rose, you, it'd be a treat. I mean, show up at these places. These are great places to visit. And um, thank you again for all your years of service. We love you. It's a wonderful pleasure. It really is woman so it's been great serving with you <laughs> i've served with in the last 10 years but i'm not going any place if somebody all of a sudden has to move or something i can step in for a while you have to bring that plaque back because we're going to do it again on the 24th so on the 24th you're going to bring it with you <laughs> yeah don't, don't mount it yet well you could mount it and take it down right now you know beautiful <laughs> it really is I have to get Chris's out too. We'll both side by side. I think that's a great <laughs> Moving on to discussion item 8A. Oh, you, Rebecca? And we never voted. We never voted. Sorry. Well, we better vote on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mrs. Powell, <laughs> can you vote on it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Conley? Yes. Mrs. Ray? Yes. Mr. Marvel? Yes. Mr. Maxson? Yes. Mr. Gross? Yes. And Miss Atchison votes yes. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> now we will move on to discussion items 8A, names for the 17 North Main Pocket Park. Miss um, Falcon. I keep moving my table. Um, so we, we put in your packet tonight um, a list of names that was collected through um, other polls. So we talked about this last month, thought we would bring it back. Um, what do you guys think of, if if you have a favorite, each one of you would get a vote and then add the DDA's recommendation. And then that we can put out to the citizens for a poll of those names. So we'd end up with two? No, one. One, okay. Is that list all of the DDAs? Uh, well, it was not from the DDA. It's from Citizens and the DDA Facebook page had a poll. I see. Okay. It's from the DDA. Okay. Yeah. A lot of you had meetings. different thoughts at the last meeting. I, I like the idea of, of giving the residents the ultimate say in it. I, I think that's a, a, a great idea. Do we have any, um, so you wanted us to kind of choose some of well, these names? You could submit a name or whatever you feel it should be called. There could be duplicates. Um, Do you want us to send you an email? Yes. Okay. Did you, okay. Um, I'm going to pull you guys. Um, Jerry, you were talking about other members of the community. That of the community. If we're going to name it after a community member and somebody who has contributed to the community. Did you have somebody in mind? Uh, 
I, I gave you the list of three that popped right off my head at that time. And are they on here? No, they are not. Okay, can you okay. give those back four, again? Four, and I'm saying we're going to need to mention them. Right. On this list we have right here, yep. I personally like Heritage Park. That includes everybody that has contributed to this community as part of the heritage of this community, its growth, and its continued growth. Okay. So that's like a full community thing. Yes. Okay. Mr. Max, Maxson, do you have any? Um. Yeah, I, 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 I do. Uh, I did attend the last meeting, and I was part of that. And that's kind of what struck me is, and, and uh, the names that uh, uh, Mr. Gross mentioned, and uh, Rose just reiterated in her in her speech. Um, there are so many people that have um, contributed to uh, uh, the community and the city, um, and I, I wondered how you would narrow that down um, to the limited resources that we have. We can name, name a park here. Where right, right, go, yeah. You know? um, so if we could find a way that um, uh, th that would uh, kind of a, a name, a more descriptive name maybe that would embrace the community. Um, and who knows, maybe if we want to recognize individuals, we can find a way to do that. I don't know how we'd finance it, but signs and plaques which maybe could give a paragraph or a, a list of the contributions so people know who they are and what they have contributed um we've got morley park does anybody know who morley was no you do i don't <laughs> you know um but but uh the but he, it, uh, how good he that he was. sure sure absolutely um um, but uh, yeah, that, so um, yeah, I, I and, I, and like, and as I said, I like the idea of uh, having the residents have have a hand in, in saying that. Um, I would uh, concur with uh, Mr. Gross that um, Heritage Park would be a good way to um, recognize, in a in a in a way, um, uh, everybody that came before and um, uh, the, the volunteers and the people that will contribute in the future. If I can, if I can embellish upon that building, what I said that brings in everybody, I could see a plaque, placard, or a listing down there, with individuals' names who have distinguished themselves on that. That would be that would be a nice idea. Oh, I think that could happen. Yeah, the citizens could uh, bring up people. Of course, you got to figure out how they contributed to the community, so on and so forth. Uh, could be former uh, Skinner's. Skinner's Drugstore was a, a, a stronghold back when I was, they were active in the community. So it's just things like that. If anybody came up with it, um, it could be possibly put on there with a vote of some sort somewhere along the line. Uh, it's just, that, that could be built on it. it and that would go into it with the Heritage Park. So. Okay. I would agree. I think I think that it's it's good to remember those that you know did lots of good for our community, and there's a lot of them that have. So I'm totally in favor of having a plaque or something, some kind of name that uh, generalizes all of them, if that's a way of putting it. So I don't have a name that sticks out to me on this list, but yeah, that's just I'm open. Mrs. Rice? Well, that name was number two on my list. Number one, I wasn't even sure of, so that makes sense to me. <laughs> um, I like the idea of the Heritage Park. It just brings the community into what was past and now present. Mm -hmm. There, I've been here for 18 years, and I would not know pretty much any of the people that you talk about, so... Mm -hmm. But that still doesn't change anything. I just want to recognize that they we have a lot of new people as well. So we're trying to kind of, we want to just kind of try to combine that in a way. And I just think that's a really nice name. Mrs. Connor, um, <clears throat> I think Heritage Park can work. Um, two city managers go. We became, we signed an MOU with the Federal Parks Association. 
for the North, for the North Country Trail. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that we talked about becoming a trail town was to have historical markers. And by the way, I've seen some through hikers, which is sort of interesting. I don't know if you've seen the people with the like great big packs and they're, you know, so I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. we have through hikers now. Yes. So that's kind of cool. Um, that we were supposed to come up with specific historic locations that we would put signs on. And they included things like Grace and Nina's graves Mm -hmm. and putting a sign there talking about the foundation of the red flannel because they're buried next to each other in the cemetery. Um, Talking about things like we got a sign for the spring. Mm -hmm. Um, but We did the rotary did. Well, and I can't actually there was like a specific man and I don't remember. Jack Clark. Yes. (laughs) Who came with the sign Mm -hmm. and it was like a thing. Um, cause he put it in and then there was a certain person that got angry about it. But anyway, <laughs> that's another story. And Jerry and I were going to go dig a hole and put some concrete in, but, um, I think maybe we should, Heritage Park is great, but then maybe we should have some, and, and the reason that we didn't follow through on that was literally the cost of the signs. Mm-hmm. Michael was like. Do you know how much these signs cost? He like called me in his office and he had this whole thing of like, and I'm like, okay. I, but I mean, this is what the National Park Service said. And I guess if you've ever been to a national park, they put a lot of those things up. And I would advocate we should, like there should be a thing outside Skinner Field that says these who the Skinners were. There should be a thing in Morley Park that says this is who the Morley family were. This is who Riggle family were. Mm-hmm. And then we could add in some of these things like the, you know, we were the location of the first Meyer store. Second. Actually, no, we were the first. The originals in Greenville. Not my understanding, but okay. Because he supposedly had a cart that he had down on Main Street. So I was told by a... Could have done that too, sure. And before they built the <clears throat> store in Greenville. But anyway, those would be... I mean, I think Heritage Park is fine, but rather than putting a list of names underneath of it, I think it would be lovely to put... Signs where they... Signs and then, like, with, like, a little paragraph about... Because like you're saying, well, who knows who the Morleys are? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I do because I've given a hundred speeches about the history of this place and I've looked them up. But like, it would be nice if I didn't have to call 10 people and, you know, to to try to get that. I mean, the Model A, there should be a thing with that, right? And our first fire chief and I don't know. That would be my... That would be my take on it. So call it, I mean, call it Heritage Park. I think that's great. But I wouldn't want to just put a list of names of people underneath of it. I would want to like, I would want to spend the money on the signs and put them in the places. Just in one a year, two a year, you know, start somewhere. Okay. There is one. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's not, it doesn't live anymore, but the National Park Association or the national, the, whatever the national parks, when we signed the MOU to commit to the North Country Trail, Jerry Hall signed it. I gave a speech Mm -hmm. up at the school. And the guy from the parks is actually still on my Facebook, Luke. I can find him. He's, he was the fourth person to through hike the North Country Trail. And he came here to do the, I feel like some of, some of you were here. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I know it's been a minute, but I'm not that old. Why don't we put that, that's kind of a different, kind of, like, kind of leans into this subject, but that's kind of a different well, thing. So why don't we put that on an agenda to discuss? Can we do that? I'm just saying yeah. I would support Heritage Park, but I wouldn't support Heritage Park with a list of people's names. Like, I would like to see, like, just listing people's names doesn't... No, I don't I, think that's what he was saying. He was saying have a 
have information on what they did and yeah. certain yeah. things. So it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of about the same thing, but it's a little yeah. different. Yeah. Miss Powell, what do, you, what do you think? I like the idea of it being called the Cedar Springs Community Park because it is the community. Mm -hmm. And we do have Legacy Park. Mm -hmm. So um, that's already kind of... Uh, way to say heritage but this is a downtown cedar springs park and it's a community park and however that could come out and also as a dda we initially started the idea of building a little park there mm -hmm. and um i kind of thought maybe dda park should go in on it because we had the first discussions at dda about turning that little spot into a park so it could be the down to the Cedar Springs DDA Park and the history in that because um, it's it's a community park and it belongs to the people and it was initially started with the DDA. So I would say uh, Cedar Springs Community Park or Downtown Community Park if we could do it. A lot of words. Yeah, I do like community better than heritage. Yeah, community. Hopefully we'll have a lot of community activities there. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm for um, getting, recognizing a lot of the people in the community that have done a lot of things. Um, the hard time, hard, hard point is where do we put, you know, where do we put it? Um, I don't, you know, like there's a lot of, there'll be space on what the bathroom or whatever there. But I think we could start doing that and then, and then lean into the other, um, as a different project. Um, so I like either Cedar Springs Community Park or Heritage Park. I think you can do it with either. Those two names, do you want the recommendation by DDA? So three names to go out to the community? Yeah, is that enough? I mean. I actually don't want too many. Right? Yeah. Or it becomes true. hard. You're doing too many. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be good. So, I mean, maybe make a, uh, yeah. Isn't there a way now you put one of those codes on and you take a picture and then it has all the QR, QR codes, yeah that has all the information that you might want to have in that description of that park. You don't have to have 20 names. You just. Yeah. Well, because I think um, kind of putting the information that we want to recognize a lot of people from the community um, other than, you know, a lot of people instead of just one person kind of make um, there too, maybe um, that that's what, what we're leaning toward that's why we're you know um not just like leaning away from jerry you know so um and he i mean I don't, we don't have to say that he has something else named after him but i mean just give a little description of why maybe why we're le leaning that way there it's up would to that you. be swaying votes though <laughs> <laughs> doubt it i just wanted to explain because i think we're gonna get we had a lot of votes for Jerry Hall, you know, so I wouldn't want to sway the votes. No, but what do you think, Jerry? The only problem with doing it strictly for Jerry, again, I appreciate everything he did, right. both he and Amy and Amy's first husband. Unfortunately, he passed away too soon. But uh, the people that are going to vote I can tell you will not recognize the other names that I recognize as the same as what you did uh, because you weren't here. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to go for Jerry Hall uh, and I wouldn't be totally opposed either, but I think there's other people in the past that should be recognized if you're going to start recognizing somebody for each and every project. So uh, I I don't think you can 
use a name one that is relative unless it's something that there's a lot of people can relate to. And you would have to give a full history of what they did. And then you're getting not just a popularity poll, it's a recognition in what has been earned. So that's a long answer for, I don't think we should just use a single person's name for something other than a project such as we did with Jerry for the water treatment plant. He was very instrumental in that, and he was recognized because he was instrumental in that. So, okay. That's where those QR codes come in pretty nice. The community would cover us all, everybody. It's our community. Because we are all part of the heritage now. Mm -hmm. Some of us closer to being heritage than others. <laughs> do with it what you may. I mean, what you think is. We can do up a little paragraph. We're trying to name this park. You know, we got grant money to put this park there. And yeah, these are the three options. Yeah. Let us know your vote. We'll bring that back to the next council meeting. All right. Anything else anybody wants to say? Okay. Um, hearing no additional discussion, we will now move on to communications. Uh, have anything read to us or? July 24th, um, NKCE will be giving away um, ice cream social at the concert. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and a really good band too. Yeah. And cruisers. Oh yeah. 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 They're a big draw. The only other one I wanted to mention was the EDA closeout letter for the West Street project. This started in I think 2019. So many, 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 many years. Um several um so Jerry Fidio, the guy in Chicago that started the grant with us retired halfway through. So that was a new, um, Ngazi, I don't remember her last name, Lopez had to kind of go back to square one, catch up with Jerry had approved, then finish the grant. The engineer at row left. We had to get another engineer up to speed with everything. Um, I stepped away. Emily had to learn a lot. So a lot of people involved. It it just, I'm so glad it's closed out, but now we just need to market the property and sell it and get some businesses down there. So glad that's done. Anna, lately at all? Um, not lately. Okay, moving on to department reports. Right place. They just haven't found it yet. Right. Okay. Um, I don't have too much. I was on vacation for a couple of weeks. Um, definitely time away. Thank you to all the staff and employees that did their job very well while I was gone and um my phone didn't ring with emergencies and so a, a great crew here. Um, just wanted to mention sidewalk sales on Friday. Come down Springs for sidewalk sales. And then Saturday, there will be many, many people here for the Cedar Blitz bike race. Uh, Main Street will be closed from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Oh. Oh, have... Who is on for public works? Tanya? Yes, hello. Um, so... We repaired the playground equipment down at Morley Park, pulled mm -hmm. some out and then replaced some broken pieces on there. Move the owl, the library next to the girl. Somebody had requested we do that, so we did that. Power washed the amphitheater and repainted the back doors, which unfortunately are scratched up again. And then we repainted the restroom at the staging area. Just mowing and keeping up on the other city stuff that we do daily. And that's it. Um, 
Yep, I hope to bring that to you in August. Um, a couple of members of staff and I are going to tour another township locally that has the same setup that we're looking at. So we want to see them in action, like what the whole setup is, so we can, when we present it to you, we're more. And the lesson that is getting scratched in those doors. Yeah, okay, so hopefully we're going to get something where we can figure out what's going on there. That's our plan. Law enforcement, <laughs> Mr. Props, Sergeant Props. First off, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Puckett for coming in and addressing and bringing to our attention speeding on Pine Street in your fist here, right? So I believe that you contacted me in the past, reference speeding in that area. I know we did some selective enforcement through there. Um, it's a difficult area for us because our cruisers require to be facing traffic. It's a difficult area for us to run stationary radar in that area. We did have some 416 officers come through uh, a couple times after those complaints to us uh, to do selective enforcement, but they're all over the county. They're hard to get into the city as much as we'd like. And I don't know if we can, if we've ever done or could do a speed study where they come in, they put the things on the road uh, that can track the speed and the car count in that area might give the board a little better idea of the speed and the car count asked for that i thought we had a couple of those no we've done the signs that like tell people and then tell them to slow down but not the like where you roll over them and they tell you how many cars went down your street and what speed they're going um i have that driveway on the corner of fifth and pine that goes through so i mean if you need to use that Mm -hmm. If you need to use that occasionally, yeah. Your, drive, your driveway is a little tough. I've, I've actually told your deputies before, like, you guys can sit in my driveway. Yeah. I don't I don't even care if I'm home. Yeah. Just so that it's not really pointing. Your driveway is a little tough because it has a sidewalk on that side. Uh, I don't mind. Side. Side. Yeah. 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 Well, I, thought, I thought you were on the yeah. north side. So... So yeah, no, I'm east. Right. Side, east. Uh, the sidewalk. Yeah, so I'm on the south side. Mm -hmm. Those three Pine. newer development houses. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know what the speed count, how accurate would be by Fifth Street. I don't know if they'll put it that close to an intersection because you got all the cars turning off of Fifth Street, manipulating the speed. Coming from, you know, probably further down, anyways, you know, so. You do like to peel out at the corner, though. Monday, Monday, like, I was just about to say, yeah. That, and I sit out there personally. Yeah. You can sit out there for an hour or two hours and not have anything. And then you could, I think if you're out there all the time, as soon as we leave, there goes somebody. So uh, we'll definitely do extra patrol in the area. We have another uh, citizen that's come forward, reference speeding in Mesquite and Mary Street by the high school. And we've sat out there for the last three weeks and uh really realize how bad the speeding is through that section as well and i think the one of the officers last week had 10 traffic stops in a couple hours right there so um we encourage the citizens to come forward and and reach out to us uh, my contact information is on our website or call the city and they can give you my email and stuff for those type of requests but i will look into seeing if we can get a county type of speed enforcement not speed enforcement a speed study done on pine street and car count so maybe you guys have a better idea about his suggestion of a stop sign there like they come like coming from um 17 no yeah i mean, remember i'm dyslexic white creek that coming like down the hill towards like cta and it's i don't know what is it 45 up on the 25 and then it comes down to 25 and you're going downhill as you're and like people just and it goes from being farm to being, hello, you're in town. In because the church has a great parking lot for us to sit in. But and we also sit behind the gas station there, right at Main Street and Pine on the north side where the, the building was taken down. That's an area that we can sit. And now the new parking lot on Pine Street, we can sit in there as well. But so Fly, like they just keep flying. They just don't hit the brakes when it is twenty five. I mean, that's my I don't know. And hope I can get something back to the board to give you an idea of 
I don't know what it takes to get stop signs. I don't know if you guys. You can. You can do a. Get all kinds of stuff to get stop signs, but. Sidewalk construction and get a borrowed one, and then maybe concrete it in. <laughs> well, they put one on Fifth Street. Yeah, we did. That's what I'm talking about. Oh. <laughs> we just kept it. <laughs> We just got to make sure we're doing it legally so when we write those traffic tickets we don't we're not losing that in court that the signs take a, a proper way of putting those things in so um the other thing that we're working on is the gravel race this saturday uh we've got a ton of man hours into this gravel race uh we'll be closing main street for the first time this year starting on main street and ending on main street um the race will come back in on muskegon turn north on first street west on beach by the american legion and then back northbound on Main Street to the finish line right before Maple. And how many people? We, we talked today. I think they have 520 registered to race, but he expects a lot of people to wait till the last minute, so he's expecting close to 600 riders this year. They were starting a little bit later, um, just hoping that riders and family maybe stick around a little bit afterwards. I know the brewery is going to have a cornhole tournament on Maple Street this year between the brewery and the library. That will be closed uh, before the race is over. And um, after the race, they'll have the uh, cornhole tournament there as well. So a lot of time and effort has been put into it by DPW, us, and the race director, and Darla, and everybody else. So looking forward to that. <clears throat> and the library is going to close that day. No, the library is, uh, we're leaving the library driveway open oh, on the west side. Uh, the heart of Cedar Spring side. The, the community they, room. They pulled. Oh. They did say at the library meeting yeah. they were going to close for the day. Yeah. That's what they said. Yeah. This last, this last meeting? Yeah. Weren't they having a vent or something in there that they had to get into? So, yeah. The, they have that. Yeah. The people who rented it are have, like, withdrawn their, they're not oh. renting it anymore. Oh. So we don't have to worry about that. Then? We'll still close it the same way we're doing. That will just open up parking for uh, people to park in the library. They just can't come out the east side. We'll close it from the west side. They can still get into that parking lot and out of that parking lot on the west side. So does the race start? Race starts at ten. We'll be closing Main Street at eight. We have to work on getting vehicles off the roadway. They should be coming back through. So it takes off at 10. Some of the first and fastest riders will be coming back at 11 for the 18 mile and possibly even the last year, some of the speed racers did a 36 mile and hour and 10 minutes. They were finishing. Yeah, no, I'm not. They're flying. Guys at the age levels of the riders that are coming through at really fast speeds. And it, it draws a big crowd of participants from all ages. I think one of the participants might have been in his 80s last year that came through. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's a great event. My cousin wrote, uh, was in it. I think he got second place. He rode his bike up from Grand Rapids, did the race, and then rode back home. And I'm like, seriously? Are you sure it's not my cousin? It's <laughs> <laughs> it right now. Okay, yeah. so yeah, they are they're all in there. right now with the race on Saturday. They're running the race right now, practicing. I saw, I did see them. Yeah, that's right. Okay, thanks. How about uh, Chief Detloff, Fire Department? Um, you have our report for June. Um, thankfully, June was pretty normal, nothing major as far as that goes. We had an unfortunate start to July. Um, with our first significant fire of the year. Um, we had uh, four other departments help us with that, and we actually had two firefighters that injured. So I heard it, it was pretty significant. So, yeah, so we, we had to evacuate. But we, we went through it, and we got it done. Uh, all the reports are complete. So if um, they have any issues with the FOIAs, everything will be pushed out. So... That went through, or both of them, they're two. Thankfully. Yeah. Did you, now with this bike race, are you having more people on staff? 
two people that are going to be on the whole time for the race from 10 to 2. Will they just be at your part at the they respond to race issues? So I'll have other people that are actually responding to other stuff on town and stuff. Okay, that's well, great. Surrounding county township fire departments be taking any part of this race and awareness and. They know what's going on, but they are not specifically participating in it. Yeah. How's the fire truck going? Actually, we've already had two people look at it, um, start going through that. So we're just waiting for the quote back and we're waiting for our third company to come take a look. Thank you. All right, city clerk. What do you want to do to finance first? Madam Mayor, can I just say something to the fire chief? Sure. I would just like to say, because I lived like four houses down, and you all were amazing. And that fire. Mm -hmm. And that you were out with other calls, because I hear the sirens, and suddenly Cortland is in my yard, hooking on to the fire hydrant, and brought in a bulldozer to finally drop it because it was such a hot fire. You poured so much water on it and you couldn't get it out. The floor has collapsed and you kept it from melting the person's house next door that's feet away. Mm -hmm. I mean, you all were just flipping rock stars. Yeah. That's all I got to say. Get a little hectic when you first start up going through. So it's a little catastrophic. And you to know that you are amazing not just us we have a great group of departments around us i mean sand lake solon Cortland, all algoma they all got here very quickly within a couple of minutes i mean it was just crazy and so that's what i'm saying i just wanted to say i mean i have these people i've done eight loads of their laundry in my steam washer that they've pulled out from rubbermaid totes that you all helped them get that day so that some of the favorite stuffed animals and blankets of the kids we've been able to rescue. Um, which, by the way, if anyone ever needs to know how to do that, I can tell you. <laughs> but but um, you just were amazing. Thank you. Make sure I forward it to everybody. Yeah. We have it the first and third Tuesdays of each month. So next Tuesday will be our meeting. Emptying the hoses onto my flowers. <laughs> I said, I'll bring us some donuts. <laughs> Since we don't have it in the post anymore. Cleaning night, so uh, we're probably not going to be there. <laughs> uh, a pizza parlor. Oh, pizza to these uh, firefighters. I think I we as a city should send them something in gratitude. Yeah. Uh, was it? Uh, Hungry Howies. They did a very good job. Thank you. And I did go there personally and thank them myself, too, so. Awesome. Thank you for reminding me, Jerry. It was a hot fire. It was a devastating fire. And you all just, like, every other building was saved. No, there was, I mean, there was a 14-year-old kid in the basement when it started. Mm. And you all are just amazing. That's all I got to say. <laughs> so. Right. City Clerk, Rebecca. It's a busy month for me. Um, we are working on election at full speed ahead. So we have um, completed our preliminary testing of all of our equipment. We have our public accuracy testing. That is um, the public test where anyone is welcome to come in, watch us test the equipment um, to make sure that the votes cast correctly and that the machine is working properly. That's going to be Monday, July 15th at 4 p.m. Um, we have also been very busy with FOIAs recently. We've had three in the last four days, so um, things just keep to keep us busy here. So, yeah. Any questions? No, I don't think so. Mrs. Landon. A busy month for me as well, and uh, tax bills went out at the end of June, so I'm sure you've already received those in the mail by now. So things have been going pretty smoothly so far with the collection. There's been a few questions that have come up and a couple extra phone calls, um, but everything's been going pretty smoothly, and this is my 
first time going through it on my own. Um, last year I started with the winter bills and Darla was able to walk me through that. So yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad that it, everything is going smoothly and, um, got all the bills out and I even did that when Darla was gone. So that was quite the accomplishment I felt like. Um, also, as Darla mentioned, we did close out that EDA project. That's another big thing that's been on my list. So I've been working on that closing for months. Um, so I'm happy to say it's finally been closed or approved and funded. So happy to have that done. And um, we also have our um, annual audit that's going to be coming up in the month of August. So that's targeted towards the week of, I believe, August 19th. Um, so I'm just busy checking things over and making any adjustments for the year end and, um, getting prepared for that, getting all the files rounded up and yeah, hopefully we'll be sitting good for that. Do we have anything else from the other reports? Um, code enforcement building inspection. With no additional department reports, we will move on to closed session. I would like to entertain a motion to go into closed session pursuant to section 8H of the Michigan Open Meetings Act to consider and discuss a written legal opinion from the city attorney at 7.56 p.m. I'll make that motion. Any discussion? Mr. Gross. Yes. No. Cool. I, I'm roll call vote, Mr. Okay. Mr. Gross. Yeah, I'm asking. Yeah. What would you like to vote? Yes. yes. Okay. Mr. Max. Yes. Mr. Marvel. Yes. Mrs. Ray. Yes. Mrs. Conley. Yes. Mrs. Powell. Yes. Miss Atchison votes yes. Yeah. Uh, many minutes you want? Five? You think we can get in there in five minutes? Oh, yeah. Okay, let's meet in five.
Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion that we move back into open session. At 8.36 p.m. I'll support that. Ms. Powell? I'll support that. No, you vote. Voting. Voting. <laughs> <We're voting. laughs> yes. I thought I thought I had to do a yes. second. Uh, Mr. Gross? Yes. Mr. Yes. Ms. Yes. Ms. Adjutant votes yes. Seven zero. Yes. We're going on to council comments. Mrs. Conley. Um Again, I just want to reiterate that our fire department are amazing people. And I was really impressed with how well the mutual aid agreement worked, how quickly it worked, that I'm hearing these sirens. I see them go around the corner. I go, by the time I get out to my front yard, Portland Township is hooking on to the fire hydrant in my front yard. And I just... I'm reminded about why that's a big deal. As my neighbor is telling me about calling her kid and trying to explain to him how he has to get out of the basement. And yeah, and like that house is gone. I mean, it's, and they were, they were just there. And Cortland was there and Stolen was there and Algoma was there and like in, and it's just, and all of the equipment works together. There was no question that Cortland could hook onto our fire hydrant, that their hoses work, that everything. I just, I am reminded that we had this big discussion about the um, people wanting the initiative to eliminate property taxes. Yeah. And that's what we, and they did not get enough signatures. Oh, good. Um, we had the conversation at the last meeting, but a big piece of that is because that's the money we use to pay for fire departments. Right. I mean, we used to pay for lots of things, but I, I really had it very clear in my brain that day is I'm watching people three doors down from me lose everything they own. Their kid is a friend of my kids. And I was like, just thank the powers that be that we have a fire department that we have and that everybody else has the fire departments they have. And by the way, we really need to get rid of the, you can blow anything off you want anywhere you want, even if it flies through the air and lands in other people's property. Like it's just, it's horrific. It doesn't help when the fire work store right there. I mean, it's just, we had bottle rockets landing in our yard from the park yeah, and Right. And it, that should not be okay. That should not be okay to have things that explode and go on fire in a place that is this packed together that can land in someone else's property. And there's nothing we can do about it to create an ordinance because the legislature said you get to blow stuff off as long as you want. Because we they don't know, but... <laughs> pretty good guess so that's just my our fire department is amazing and i'm really grateful that we i had a front row seat and i was super glad that i paid taxes to have them not have to be at my house so that's that's my and hooray for rebecca for all that she's doing to get us ready for this election and putting it on camera and that we have safe and fair elections and that's amazing so i every department's amazing but those two particular ones have risen to the top this month i will build upon that with the fire department i appreciate the fact i was there uh they asked me some questions the chief did I says, I'm not here for that. I'm dropping off some water and some ice because I knew they needed some cold drink, but he was still asking me. And I says, well, what do you think? And he's told me, and it was exactly what I would have told him. So uh, I'd like to think that I had a little bit to do with that somewhere along the line. The continued training and the thing that goes on with that, 
is a must. Uh, sometimes people wonder why the expense. That's the expense right there. Uh, there wasn't much of anything they could do for that home. It had such a start. The fact that they did what they did, and part of it has always been training to wet down the neighboring properties. So, uh, Rose has probably seen it when she's been around when Chris was at one. So it's been that way right along. So it, it's passed along. It's a good training, but uh, we do have a good fire department. My concern is though, as it has been right along with the number of people we have to respond to fires during the day. One of the reasons for the number of trucks was for the need for people. So you start calling in additional. We have the pumping power, we have the equipment, but you don't have the manpower. So most every truck is gonna show up with at least two people. Some of them require three. So and that's where it's at. So uh, when I talked to Chief Frazier in the past about at least having three people during the day, he wasn't sure. I'm still sure that that's something we need during the day. Uh, somewhere, somehow, we're gonna to have to come up with it where we can have three people around during the day to respond. But uh, I, I have total faith in the city manager and what she's doing about this building. And uh, I appreciate what she's done so far and what she's brought to us. And uh, I think you're doing a great job. That's it. Oh, I'd like to welcome Michael to the board. Yeah. Uh, you're already trying to spend money. <laughs> so, uh, but un unfortunately, that's part of our job, but we have to do it wisely. So, okay. That's it. This is tomorrow. Yeah. I'm uh, super happy to be here, uh, Miss Powell. It's big congratulations to you. <laughs> it's an it's an honor to work with you. Well, thank you. It's yeah, you have a very kind heart, and I really, I really, really appreciate that about you. So, yes, yeah, I think uh, just I love the city, and I love love the direction we're going. So, good stuff ahead. Mrs. Powell, okay. now that you're crying. <laughs> well, part of my women's club duty is to uh, work on the blood drive. And the 16th is a blood drive. I got a call. They're down to like two days supply. Of course, they're, they're drawing all the time. So Tuesday, um, blood drive at the library. You can go onto their website and make an appointment. The website is easy. If you have to cancel it, you can. It's just a great website, one of the best I've ever seen. Or walk-ins are welcome. You can do it if you're 17, right? I'm not sure. You, you could find out on the website. Yeah, 1230 to 7, walk-ins are welcome. They would like you to actually have something to eat before you go in and um, help save lives. Thank you, everybody. I see you Wednesday. Hope it's not raining. This is race. Um, off by saying thank you to Darla because I know that this is, you know, it's not quite your wheelhouse. So you're learning as you go along and you're asking the right questions and reaching to the right people and you know, into this. Um, I was excited to see the number come back like that. I'm like, yes. But again, we just have to follow the right steps to get where we need to go. And maybe hopefully he'll accept what we want to offer and we can move forward with that. Um, welcome, Mr. Maxson. Thank you. To have you on. Thank you. And um, Rose, we'll have beers. <laughs> <laughs> so excited. So maybe you'll be next. Oh, <laughs> that's it, Mr. Maxim. I'd like to thank everybody for welcoming me uh, to the council. Um, I uh, uh, hope that in uh, my time here, I can uh, contribute. Uh, 
and uh, be a, a very, very small part of uh, some of the names that were mentioned during the meeting, uh, including Rose. Um, congratulations. Um, and I, I look forward to working uh, with you all, and I look forward to working for the city. Thank you. Comes down to me. <laughs> um, this council is wonderful. We're going to miss Rose. Luckily, it's not till November, and she's still going to be still going to be on the planning commission for us. Um, oh, I'm glad we're going to be able to do something for you, and I can't wait for the day. It's going to be so fun. I told her, I said I took the whole day off, and she goes, "Oh boy, that must be special then." <laughs> so yes, yeah, very fun, and um, just come join us, you know, it's going to be a great time. You can see how we kind of work together. Um, the city staff, again, it's just amazing. Um, I just don't, I don't know what else to say about you guys. You're just great. Um, you know, um, cover things that, you know, letting us know what's going on. You're already taking care of it. You know, that's great. Um, Really nothing else. Um, welcome again. Thank you. And I, with that, I will call adjournment at 847.